Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Series where we add value to people's lives happening every Wednesday and Thursday on eBooz Radio. You can catch the Lunchtime Series on all your major podcast channels and uh, to help us grow and like, uh, to help us grow, uh, like and follow and share the channel, guys. And uh, in today's marketing and leadership segment, we have uh, our marketing and communications expert and co-host, Craig Pagely. How are you, Craig? Kevin, I'm great. Yeah, good to be chatting again. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, bit of a yes. frustrating one for me with the good old uh, national rugby team losing the opening autumn European uh, rugby game against Ireland. And then to crown that, uh, you know, Proteus Cricket losing to the Netherlands on Sunday of all teams, uh, we saw them being eliminated from the tournament. So a bit frustrating, but yeah, that's the reality. <laughs> did, did you get to watch any of the games? I didn't know. I was uh, I was a little bit preoccupied with uh, the house and fixing the house and doing house things. Um, so and you're starting the second business and stuff. So uh, that's that's it's all it's all keeping me preoccupied. So I was okay. out and about the whole time. Yeah, I'll give you the so, weekly updates. <laughs> fantastic. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, so, Craig, thanks for uh, the, uh, last week's conversation um, uh, on uh, the digital trends to look out for for 2023. Before we start, don't you want to give us a bit of a, a wrap up of that last week's conversation? Absolutely, Kevin. So, so the key takeaway points are from the article titled "The Next Eight Big Digital Marketing Trends in 2023." which are found on ecommercefastlane.com, and they noted as follows. So, the first point there is gathering zero party data through practices like form building. So big data is key to business success and sustainability, as we know. The biggest challenge, though, is that uh, the way we gather data has had to change due to new privacy laws, and um, these have been implemented worldwide, so a really big impact on, on, on the way we gather and use data. The second point was email marketing for product launches and small businesses becomes more influential. I still believe in, in, in the platform of email marketing. It is one of the best marketing methods currently being used with 89% of marketers using it primarily for lead generation, Kevin. The third point we, we covered in the article was more creativity will come through marketing apps like SurveyMonkey. Here we all know creativity is a key differentiator supported by highly relevant content so that clients have the best chance of getting noticed and driving more engagement. And SurveyMonkey is a perfect platform to actually go out and test that creativity uh, for driving your email marketing. The fourth point of the article was about real-time messaging platforms will be great for data collection. Again, key focus on data. Consumers want everything as quickly as possible. This means that real-time messaging platforms are the perfect opportunity to reach customers quickly and directly, and obviously for gathering data and insights to build further opportunities. The fifth point is influencer marketing will continue to boom. It's in a nice course correction in this space. What was once used only by a handful of marketers is now being used by almost every business that exists digitally with much of the, the, the actual activity being driven through the likes of TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Point six was customers will want more gratification when shopping with brands. When shopping online, they want to get what they want instantly. Any delays or having to wait is going to lead to consumers going elsewhere. That's why marketing teams need to really need to think proactively rather than just reactively when uh, customers approach them with a query. Point seven is a good build on, on the previous point. Outsource to digital marketing agencies will be popular. No company wants to be held back by the opportunities because they don't have enough resources in-house. Outsourcing therefore can bring immediate value to a brand or agency. And the final point in that article is that Chuck chatbots will be found in more websites for user experience. As we know, chatbots are rapidly evolving to become a much more useful and effective method for marketers to engage with consumers, enabling smaller businesses to answer queries and engage with consumers who might actually need assistance outside of those traditional working hours, Kevin. And those are the key takeaway points from last week's discussion. Craig, uh, you know, uh, for chatbots, uh, I can see how it would work for a smaller, a smaller brand. But I was uh, on uh, on a on a service provider today, chatting to a chatbot, and it took it took them at least forty five minutes to just respond yeah, between every little. And I was like, uh, yeah, as much as it creates a convenience for you to sort of plug it into a website, I was like, I don't know if it necessarily works for large corporations because they. 
you just sit there and watch the WhatsApp and you kind of go, okay, well, now I, I can't really get much done now. I, I'm with you on that, Kevin. There are a couple of large brands that I engage with on a regular basis and the chatbot proposition is still, for me, quite clunky and slow. And it's almost as mm. if they're still trying to get you to understand the permutations of the AI on the back end and having some AI and some personal intervention or human intervention. Um, so yeah, being a little bit fair on them, but but I think coming into next year, I really think that the big brands, both financial services and and, and mobile network operators need to up their game in that space. Yeah, absolutely. Craig, so uh, what are we going to share with the listeners today? Kevin, I want to pick up on a, on a specific topic that we touched on last week when discussing these digital trends. In fact, you know, as, as I've just reiterated on the key takeaway points, that actually being point five of the article I referenced, namely influencer marketing will continue to boom. And there's a lot being published uh, on the topic and the summary of a recent insider intelligence e-marketer report that I came across provides a great overview. And it actually set the tone for for the direction of today's conversation. But that said, I actually want to start the conversation by touching on another really important topic that is gaining a lot of interest and resulting in many negative comments across the world, Kevin. A, a lot of negative comments around. So, so what is it that you want to share? Is that sort of, that's sort of usual uh, go-to for Craig? <laughs> well, no, so, so probably the biggest social media conversation happening right now, Kevin, is that being the current state of Twitter ah, and yes. what has actually transpired since Elon Musk took full control of the Bluebird just over a week ago. So I... Craig, I mean, I am all for disruption, right? I, I think I, as much as he's, he's like a crazy scientist, or it seems like it, um, I, I don't think that, <clears throat> you know, if brand, if brand, if, if you were proud about the, the Twitter brand, they wouldn't have sold it, you know, at the end of the day. Um, Jack Dorsey would have, would have really just, for, for the sake of looking after his people and the, the name of Twitter, uh, he would have stuck to his guns and said, you know, like, yes, but, um, the, the, you know, it comes with a bunch of rules, maybe. Um, I think he, he sort of, he was like, ah, yes, lots of money and um, I'll go away and go and have life, you know, on an island. Um, so, and now it's Elon's, you know, it's his baby. So I think whatever he's doing is, is, is a little bit different but I think it's necessary. I absolutely love what you're saying. And, and I wholeheartedly believe in that. At the end of the day, Twitter is still a business. There, there are some fundamental issues to, to get right into a course correction and survival of the business. Uh, as yeah. with any other business in a merger and acquisition, there, there are people that uh, are pushed out, fall by the wayside. There's some that, that really have great value to help the business move forward, and Twitter is just another one of those. Interestingly, you mentioned Jack Dorsey. There, there, there's a, a good couple of uh, tweets and, and comments from himself yesterday um, actually taking blame or accountability for causing this, this particular impasse with you know more than 50% of, of staff having to be laid off just because he felt that the, the business has grown too quickly and and you know he he knows that there should have been some other process in place to ensure that that this wouldn't happen but that said i've pulled a few key points from from different sources that i came across on, on, on the weekend kevin and these are noted as follows so the first one is an extract from an article posted on livemint.com great great platform for some really good commentary it was posted on 5th of november and it notes the following kevin Twitter Inc. was sued over Elon Musk's plan to eliminate about 3,700 jobs on the social media platform, half of its work workforce, which workers say the company is doing without enough notice in violation of federal and California law. The class action lawsuit was filed on Thursday in San Francisco Federal Court. The Federal Worker Adjustment and Restraining Notification Act restricts large companies from mounting mass layoffs without at least 60 days of advance notice. Slight caveat there is, is that what Twitter has done is it's given the folk that have been laid off a further three months beyond their notice period or, or the, the actual payments that they do um, based on their tenure 
they've put in another three months. So actually, in a way, there's a payment structure that mitigates that particular point, but the process might not have been followed uh, effectively in this regard. Yeah. Some of the other comments in social media note that Elon Musk claimed that the company is running at losses, apparently about as much as $4 million a day, Kevin, as several advertisers have suspended ad spending on Twitter. The likes of Volkswagen, uh, General Motors, Pfizer, United Airlines are all amongst the prominent brands that have already paused the advertising on Twitter and, and really some key he points as, as to why advertisers fear that the misinformation and hate speech would be allowed to proliferate on the platform and that the ads could actually appear alongside problematic and harmful content. And finally, an extract from, from an article posted on NDTV.com again on, on the 5th of November, and it notes the following. Twitter had 3,900 advertisers in May and 2,300 in August. Uh, the number rose to 2,900 in September, according to Media Radar. The analytics company found that General Motors, which paused its advertising spend on Twitter last week, had spent an average of 1.7 million US dollars a month on the platform. There were more than 1,000 new advertisers on the platform each month before July when Musk's feud with Twitter began to intensify, and the number of advertisers actually dropped to 200, according to uh, the New York Times. So you can really see that that there's uh, there's a lot of feathers being ruffled with the bluebird, and I look forward to seeing where where this goes moving forward. So, and I think the the biggest problem that I think is you know the the, the megalomania that comes with having so much power like Mr. Trump himself, um, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you get to a point where, where you're almost playing God because you, you tweet one little thing mm -hmm. and you have masses and masses of people who, who just follow that as if it's law. Uh, and I think, and I don't think Elon is considering that uh, quite effectively. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think he's probably, he's, um, uh, his ego might be a little bit out of whack um, because we've seen, you know, with the with the one tweet that Donald Trump made, um, and he just he just suggested that there be an insurrection at at the White House, uh, and he suggested that you know people might get out of hand if if things don't go his way, and people sort of translated that into complete chaos, you know. So, yeah, I mean, from that perspective. Uh, I think there has to be some kind of moderation uh, of sorts. Moderation of sorts, and and he needs to he needs to follow um, he needs to have some kind of rules in place for for this to actually be effective. Else yeah. he's gonna it's just gonna be a messy. Amazing. Kevin, it's a, again another good point there because if you consider a lot of the fear that these major brands have is actually around the misinformation. Um, you know, forget about the hate speech and all the rest of it. There's just a, another layer of misinformation, particularly as as they're sitting. I think it may be even tomorrow where where some of the midterm elections are are happening, and and there's an absolute bias against people of color in in many of these states, and yeah. and this misinformation really is critical to, you know changing the course of, of, of political history in, in this regard. So yeah, not, another another good point. I mean, and sorry, just to add, I, I'm all for free speech and for what it is you want to say. Um, but uh, there, there's, there's, you have to be responsible for what you have to say, you know, so it's, it's, it's a very fine line. And I, and I think he's, he's gonna, he's gonna put his foot into something very difficult if he, if he doesn't, curb that and if he does, if he's not aware of what he's about to do but i mean going back to the primary topic today um you, can you tell us about uh, the influ influencer marketing kevin yeah thanks i'll just quickly again set some context to the topic i'm starting with the definition that's published on on blog uh, bloghubspot.com on 25th of august 2022 and the article is, is titled Influencer Marketing Strategy Checklist and Template, was written by Corrine McGinley and notes the following. Influencer marketing is a strategy where businesses rely on an influential leader to recommend their product to their target audience. Uh, these leaders usually have a large social following or a captive 
uh, market segments. And, and by building influencer relationships, brands can therefore leverage the influencer's reach to achieve their marketing goal. Influencer collaboration, which is a key enabler in influencer marketing, is a marketing strategy that involves paying individuals with the large social media following to advertise your brand to their followers. The influencer can demand compensation and monetary value or actually complementary products and services in exchange for their recommendations. And the last point on, on, on that particular reference is influencer marketing has naturally become one of the most popular marketing methods as the target markets become younger and more digitally connected. Influencers can actually help organizations connect with those consumers where they are online. And, and lastly, Kevin, according to influencermarketinghub.com, Influencer marketing involves a brand collaboration with online influencer to market one of its products or services. Some influencer marketing collaborations are less tangible than that. Brands simply work with influencers to actually help improve brand recognition. Yeah. Interestingly enough, Elon is considered an influencer. <laughs> of magnanimous proportion, yes. because because he you know he just tweets one little thing about Bitcoin and then Bitcoin you know fluctuates to unheard of levels kind of thing. So, I mean, it, it's quite ironic that he, the influence himself now has bought the influencing brand, uh, you, you know, platform. Yeah, yeah. judge, judge, and jury kind of uh, positioning. Yeah, how convenient. Um, with it, with a clear understanding of the influence marketing. Uh, what value does it bring to the world of marketing, Craig? Yeah, Kevin, a good a good question because it most definitely does bring value um, to brands and the marketing industry at large. Uh, the State of Influencer Marketing Benchmark Report 2022 that I referenced earlier, published by by uh, uh, published to influencermarketinghub.com, which was updated on the second of March 2022, written by Werner Gerhaeser informs us of the following. And some really great stats here, and, and, and I know you like figures and, and stats. The influencer marketing industry is set to grow to approximately 16.4 billion US dollars this year. Influencer marketing focused platforms have raised more than 800 million in funding in 2022 alone, Kevin. The global number of influencer marketing related services grew by 26% last year. With nine, at least with 18,900 firms offering or specializing in influencer marketing services. More than 75% of brand marketers intend to dedicate a budget to influencer marketing in 2022. The growth of the influencer marketing industry is strongly impacted on by an estimated 9% year on year increase in usage of ad blocking tools with the average global desktop ad blocking rate sitting above 43%. So, so very much moving into those digital channels where uh, direct uh, engagement with, with consumer and influencer is, is helping overcome some of those issues. 54% of the firms working with influencers operate an e-commerce store. Last year saw a notable increase in brands paying money to influencers, which is now an equal split between monetary payments and influencers receiving free products. So at first it was about the free products. Now there's there's a, a, a much more of a balance in place. And interestingly, take note here, Zara was the most mentioned brand on Instagram and it has an estimated reach of 2,074 billion people. That's incredibly, mm, that's, it's, that's, it's that's, that's just one unreal. brand that's incredibly yeah, yeah. high. Netflix was the most followed brand on TikTok in 2021, and 68% of marketers plan to increase their influencer marketing, have planned to uh, increase their influencer marketing spend this year. And here's another uh, a good one to end on. Instagram is used by nearly 80% of brands that actually engage in influencer marketing, Kevin. Moving on from, from a social commerce point of view, we saw the value of social commerce sales in 2022 being estimated at 958 billion US dollars. And by 2025, social commerce is expected to account for 17% of all e-commerce spending. And then from a creator economy point of view, the creator economy market size is estimated to reach $104 billion by the end of this year, with more than 50 million people globally considering themselves content creators. Yeah, so, so really 
all of that feeding straight into to the importance and relevance of influencer marketing. But I, in closing on 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 these facts and figures, I just quickly want to pick up on the summary from the Insider Intelligence eMarketer Influence Report, Kevin, which notes the following. As the recession looms, many marketers are tightening their budgets, but not for influencer marketing. Influencer marketing will not only remain resilient, but it may actually benefit from some of the macro challenges facing social advertising. Even so, it's not immune to problems. And some marketers may choose to hold back spending. Those that continue to spend, however, will dedicate more dollars to TikTok and short videos should be the priority on Instagram and YouTube. So the findings expand to, to say that most marketers are increasing, not cutting their spend on creators. TikTok's growth is boosting total influencer spending. Creator campaigns are still inexpensive on TikTok, obviously, but, but for so many marketers leaning in, those small sums are, are starting to add up. The influencer monetization landscape is changing, but creators are still relying primarily on brand partnerships to make a living. And despite improvements, uh, a measurement is still a hurdle, Kevin, proving that ROI is vital during times of uh, economic uncertainty. And three lovely opportunities here is that marketers should take a video first approach to influencer marketing. Uh, on Instagram, marketers should focus on branded content, should focus their branded content on reels. Static posts aren't going away, but but Instagram is definitely prioritizing reels and marketers really should should look to capitalizing on this. The shifts of budget into TikTok, campaign rates remain low, so experimenting with creators on TikTok isn't likely to break the bank. And um, as mentioned earlier, include shorts in YouTube branded content deals. It's now easier than ever before for YouTube content creators to actually convert those long form videos into shorts. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the strategies that I've already adopted apps and, yes. and, and, and it works. So, Craig, over and yeah. uh, above the value influencer marketing brings uh, to brand, what are the characteristics and different types of influencers that operate these days? Yeah, Kevin, again, some, some good question there because there's, there's, there's a whole host of categorization around this particular approach. So the five characteristics of a good influencer are firstly that there has to be authenticity in place. They have to be expert content creators. Um, they have to really know how to, to manage the communities that they, they're serving and working with. There has to be trust in place and they have to have passion for the particular product or category that they're participating in. Um, the, the different types of social media influencers are noted as follows, and this is, you'll see where the likes of Elon Musk comes to, to play. Nano influencers are influencers that are sitting around between one to 10,000 followers. Micro influencers are, are influencers that are sitting in the stretch, in quite a big stretch from 10,000 to 100,000 followers. Macro influencers are sitting between 100,000 and 1 million followers. Again, a very big stretch in these particular categories. And then obviously the, the mega influencers like, like uh, um, Elon himself, they're sitting with, with 1 million plus followers. But according to, to data from eMarketer, 55.4% of marketers leveraged influencer marketing uh, 2019 into 2020, um, with that number predicted to grow to 72.5% by the end of this year, a total increase of 17.1% of uh, as of uh, 11%, uh, 11 January 2022. Six key industries that are benefiting from influencer marketing. I'm sure you would have guessed the majority of these if, if you had seen them beforehand. First is travel and lifestyle. Second, food and beverage. Um, third being fashion, beauty and cosmetics. Health and fitness, fourth. And entertainment and media, fifth. And then uh, the sixth industry is, is technology, Kevin. I, as you're as you talking now, you know, thinking about the influencer marketing, um, Taylor Swift, I don't know if you if you've seen that she's released a new album. Um, yes, and she, I was watching some kind of other uh, marketing video with regards to her reaching um, all top ten of uh, the the the, um, the countdown um, of the top forty in in America at the moment. Her album is filled in the entire top ten spots. Oh wow. But what she did was she used her influencer marketing skill around two of the songs she didn't release um, on iTunes, but she released them as downloadable um, uh, links or something from her social media channels. 
And just because she did that and used her influence uh, as, you know, Taylor Swift and the amount of people that are connected to her, just by using that strategy as influencer, um, they managed to get all 10 of her songs uh, on the top 10 of the, the Billboard. I think it's the Billboard top um, top 100 or something like that. That's, that's, that's incredible. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, if you know, if the marketing team knows what they're doing uh, <laughs> and uh, they, they, uh, they use it strategically, I, I think um, being an influencer, you could leverage what, what that, uh, you know, that tool uh, to really next levels. Because, uh, you know, now yeah. she's, she's back at number ones and back on the list and back on the hits and, you know, her music's everywhere. I mean, I was and I was listening to some of the music. It's, it's not the best. It's not the best songs, you know. <laughs> you well, it. it's, it's it's interesting yet, you say that because some some of the commentary that I've come across is is really giving her accolades relative to uh, you know production quality and, and lyrics and things like that. So yeah, I haven't heard a single one of the songs, so I have no no position to make any comments. But it's. It, it definitely has received some positive acceptance from yeah. from you know, the the values bringing to music. I'll I'll make an effort somewhere along the line to go and listen. Craig, so as we close the show, um, what can you share with the listeners as our key takeaways for today's conversation? Yeah, Kevin, thanks. I want to reference the article "Influencer Marketing Strategy Checklist and Template" as mentioned earlier for for the key takeaway points. And the article lists nine steps to help marketers develop an effective influencer marketing strategy. So I'll work through this. The first, the first step there is define your goals. Um, your goals will guide your strategy and, and define the strategy's metrics for success. For instance, are you trying to increase your brand awareness or are you trying to drive engagement? Uh, do you want to improve leads or do you just want to leverage the loyalty and goodwill of your existing audience to so define your goals? The second point is, is actually to identify and define your audience. Uh, properly segment and, and identify audiences. This can be yeah, really an effective way to help the success of the campaigns and depending on the the organization's target persona or ideal buyer you should group consumers by demographic psychographic buyer life cycle buyer life cycles and and preferred channels the third point in the article is to define the budget defining budget is is vitally important as it actually guides your content creation and your distribution options. Um, and regarding paying influences, it's always good to find some that, that actually accept uh, um, product as, a, as an offset to, to financial uh, payment. Choose the type of campaign. The, uh, the way you promote your brand through an influencer depends on, on your goals and obviously the audience's preferences. So whether it's guest posting, sponsored content, retargeting, co-creation, competitions, very, very successful, mentions on social media, discount codes, etc. All of these are actually important layers in the influencer marketing campaigns, Kevin. The fifth point here is, is to decide on the social media platform you want to use. Um, yeah, all social media platforms increased usage extensively during the COVID pandemic, with Facebook being the most used social media platform last year. Um, Snapchat is, is, is definitely one to, to watch moving forward. It is the least used and either it's going to fall by the wayside or something radical is going to happen and it's, it's going to find some traction and, and move up. But platforms are, however, based on the target market and the kind of content that, that's been produced. And as we spoke about recently, there's very distinct uh, platforms for the kinds of content and audience. The sixth point there is create content for your campaigns. Once, once a campaign type and medium has been selected, it's really important to create compelling content. And remember that consumers lose interest if the messaging or content isn't captivating. Forget about the fact that it isn't relevant. If it's not captivating, they're not even going to lean in, Kevin. So make it easy as possible for your influencer to share your message. The seventh point is, is find your brand influencers. Really important point here. The right influencers should understand and connect with your audience, your brand, and the content you're promoting. You can get influences in your niche by using hashtags on social media platforms. And the opposite is that you don't have to work with an influencer in your niche, but rather actually somebody who's trending. So find the trend and follow the trend or use somebody to help create the trend. Point eight is promote your campaign. Once you've successfully identified your target market, find your ideal influencer, create that compelling content, and then and then really work hard to create that, that partnership opportunity. And, and the last point is about 
tracking your success. And it's critical to track performance of partnerships, Kevin, to ensure that all the expectations are met and, and determine what the success of the campaign is up front. Traffic websites, engagements, conversions, other metrics you've decided on when, when you determine your marketing goals on a regular basis, revisit those, calibrate the campaign and, and use, use those metrics to move forward in, in, in the correct di direction. And those are the key takeaway points for today's discussion. Fant, I love that you that it that gives you quite a, a quite a substantial breakdown of, of what what needs to happen. I mean, defining your budget, choosing your campaign, um, all the way to finding your brand influences um, and creating ca content. Uh, and we know that I mean, Craig, a couple of weeks ago we spoke about you know that uh, how important the content of uh, uh, of or the message of that content is. So, yes. You know, when you think of uh, you know, when you're attaching a whole uh, influencer to this, uh, you're going to need a tribe of people to make sure that it's it really speaks to <laughs> exactly what it is you're wanting to do. To yeah. yeah, Kevin, Kevin, absolutely. You know, we we focus long and hard on on the importance of content creation. It yeah. really is is critical to to getting the brand out there in the right way to the right audience with the right tonality and obviously with, with the right messaging. And you know, if if that's not in place, well, you're just gonna miss out entirely. You really, really are. Exactly. Craig, thank you so much, guys. If you want to catch the the lunchtime series, you can check it out on YouTube on the lunchtime series. Uh, and all the major podcast channels. And Craig and I will be back next week, Thursday. Craig, thank you so much for your time. And I'll chat to you soon. Have a great week ahead, Kevin. Look forward to it. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Jump. Bye.